H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so welcome everybody to the first class on the DevOps testing tools. Because anyway, like in these sessions, we are going to focus mostly on the the testing tools, what tools that will be used in this DevOps environment. Um, so today we are going to look at the the, the introduction part, like where this, um, what are the DevOps and uh, the Agile, how they go together, and what are the tools that will be used, or what are the tools that we are going to use in these sessions. And probably today, just we're going to start with uh, the Jira or the Jenkins, Jenkins tools. So we'll we're going to discuss like how you can download and install. So at going forward, um, we're going to use this Jenkins as a base for all our uh, the test executions. What are the test tools? Like it could be a Selenium test or a UFT test or JMeter test. So we're going to run all these tests um, on the Jenkins server. That way, we're going to we're going to set up first the Jenkins and make sure it's up and running. On our, on our systems, then we are going to work on each tools and develop some basic test in you know, order to test these web applications or a standalone applications, and we also do some performance tests using JMeter on some of these web applications and run them from Jenkins, and we do the reporting generate the reports on the Jenkins tool and then we do the analysis part. So that's the whole idea about these uh, classes but uh, I'm telling here up front because these are very um, intensive classes right we are going to do a couple of our sessions probably not today but going forward we are going to have two hour sessions and then please make sure you attend all these sessions like if you miss uh, in between though you you get recorded recorded class for that session but it's always be present in the session right that we know just if you have any questions all your questions will be answered so part of this um, like say what did, um, let me tell you how these sessions goes um, you're you're going to get um, the recorded sessions I'm going to record every session the video recordings you will get so the you will get the class notes like what are things that we type that's part of the material and also you will get um, the assignments then the video recordings So that way you can review the session and come back uh, with any questions in the following class. And also like just to make sure you are going to install, uh, to start with the get this one virtual machine. I prefer that way so that you don't have any issues um, with um, Just install a virtual system, virtual machine, and you're going to put uh, the tool start with uh, today, right? Uh, so we're going to do this Jenkins tool. I'm going to show you like how you can download and install that tool. Okay, 
So just I want to make clear up front, like so that I don't get these questions again and again. Like are we getting the recordings? Are we getting the class notes? That thing that we just want to make sure. Okay, so let's get started. What is Agile? Like who is going to speak? What you know about Agile? Or did you hear the Agile earlier? What is your experience with Agile? How did you work in Agile? Anyone? I would like because this this is going to be more uh, more interactive kind of things, right? I don't want just uh, you just keep quiet, right? That you know, just if it if it will be more interactive, then you learn, and I feel happy, right? Instead of always I speak and then you listen, right? So who can speak? Just a couple of minutes. Hey, this is what I know about Azar. Anyone? Yes? Who knows Azar? Who knows Azar, methodologies, or any particular methodologies and uh, how these things work? Well, uh, hi, here's a fun. Yeah, in Agile, we can change uh, in like uh, FTLC, what we work on in a software development life cycle. We can change any change, make any changes from the client, like uh, we can in the waterfall method or V-shaped model. So in Agile methodology, we can make any changes and we are too much pace in waterfall methodology. Okay. Okay. Good. Anyone? Come on. It's like maybe you might have heard at one point, right? What is this alleys? So we are keeping quiet. All right. So I'm going to display this picture. Like probably like you can explain now. Yeah, Lata, go ahead. Are you speaking, Lata? Because we couldn't hear you. All right, so probably let, let me start. Okay, so the Agile is basically a, a concept and the Scrum and Kanban, these are all the different the Agile the methodologies. Like as um, uh, Safwan mentioned, yeah. So basically, like, see, there's all concepts or more came into the things, right? How you can easily accommodate any changes in the requirements, right? Because before, like, we used to have this uh, earlier the methodologies like waterfall or uh, any traditional methodologies, like you name it. Mm -hmm. There actually like we consider the whole project as an entity, right? That's where like you will see if any changes that comes that's going to impact the project, right? If any changes in the requirements that's going to impact the project um, in terms of the time and budget. Then the people started thinking, right, okay, what is the what is the other way like how we can make these changes, how we can make these requirement changes easily accommodate into the project. That is where this uh, Agile concept came into the picture. And the Scrum is the one of the Agile, the popular methodologies, right? Like as I mentioned, you'll get Scrum, you'll get Kanban, and you'll get other methodologies. But the Scrum is the very popular methodologies that was followed in most of these typical companies. So part of this Agile, the Scrum, even the DevOps also a push uh, happening from from this Agile. So we're going to talk about the DevOps later. First, let's uh, first understand how this Agile, like how we are going to work in this Agile environment. See, like when you look at, when you pay attention to this picture, right, what is the starting point to work on any project? Anyone? What you need? What is a prerequisite to start working on a project? What you need or what is required? 
पर एक बात रखें यू नीड ए कस्टमर ऑब्वियस राइट यू नीड ए कस्टमर यू नीड ए क्लाइंट लाइक हु वांट दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रोजेक्ट एंड देन हिज रिक्वायरमेंट दैट मींस यू हैव टू हैव द कस्टमर रिक्वायरमेंट्स सो दैट इज वेयर इन एजाइल टेक्नोलॉजी वी कॉल दोस कस्टमर रिक्वायरमेंट्स एज the user stories or the use cases right the user stories or the use cases which is another term like what we use for the requirements in as well so this is the starting point what are these different roles in the asm so you will get the product owner and you get the scrum master and the test scrum team right so what is the product owner's responsibilities he is he is going to first understand what the customer requirements are and then he is going to put up all those requirements as the use cases the user stories which is nothing but a product backlog and product backlog is a list of requirements what we need on a project so for example if you look at a banking project what could be the product backlog so login or check balance transfer money and apply loans to the different user stories like what what the customer want on this particular project so he is going to come up with a product backlog saying that these are the things that we are going to work on this particular project so product backlog is nothing but the list of the project requirements what needs to be accomplished in the project duration like it could be a 6 months or one year project what we are going to accomplish during this one year time what are the user stories we are going to test it or what are the user stories we are going to develop that should be that that is your product backlog so the product owner main responsibility is just he has to come up with this product backlog that explains hey these are the different uh, user stories that we are going to work in this particular project then how he is going to do that anyway like he is going to talk to the customers and he is going to talk his team like the sales and uh, what are the different channels that the product owner will use who is nothing but don't confuse like the product owner or uh, the business analyst subject matter experts these are the different um, um terminology that we used for the same person okay so the role is same so he is going to talk to customer or he is going to talk to his team like the sales and technical and he gather all the requirements and he is going to put up as a product backlog then once the product backlog is done that's where like the jira and uh, all these tools comes into the picture like you look at here basically that's the product owner's responsibility right once he is he knows like okay this is the this is the project what we are going to work on then first he is going to create a project right so he is going to create a project the product owner this is the jira tool that will be given access online for you guys to have kind of hands on how these things will be done but don't worry for now you will get all your user credentials just to have hands on how this jira is going to work but this is what actually the product owner is going to create a project and right? this is the starting point and like as i mentioned these are the different um, again methodologies that that will be used some companies follow this scrum and the other companies they follow this the scrum one methodologies but anyway like first let's focus on this uh, scrum software development so then here in um, in azure like here you're going to provide um, what's the name of the project and say for example like um, just i'm going to mention some product name say this this could be and things like say the web testing right and then, so here is is going to provide some shortcut key what is that project name is then he is going to submit so that you see that um, product backlog is um, the project is created and these are the different uh, on the left side is the different buttons like this is the backlog button so he is going to now create all the product backlog 
into the zero. Like whatever the user store is, right? He's going to create all those backlog, which is nothing but the list of the product requirements, like what are the list of user stories. So he create, suppose like say we are talking about a banking project, right? So he create a user story like this. These are all the product backlogs he's going to do. Say check balance. That means these are the, this is the list of um, user stories that what we are going to accomplish. This is the product backlog, right, at high level. What that going to accomplish throughout this project duration. So that's what actually happens in the initial stage of the project. Like he's going to prepare the product backlog and gather all those user stories in Jira tool. Is that clear? Any questions? What the product owner responsibility is what he's going to do. Create a project and he's going to gather all the user stories. Uh, so in DevOps, uh, are testers supposed to assume the role of product owner also? Depends. Like sometimes, like say, I mean, most of the time, the product owner, you don't, you don't assume that uh, responsibilities of the product owner, but you will be part of the Scrum team. Okay. Any questions? Clear? All right. So once this product backlog is ready, then what happens? The next thing is like the sprint backlog. That means the product owner, again, he's going to create a sprint. Because you say like the Scrum is a, like what's the definition of Scrum? It is a iterative based or the sprint based planning. Right? It's iterative or the sprint based planning. So some companies will put this iteration as um, anywhere like between one to four weeks. Right? Some companies will follow or some projects they follow okay, two weeks as a, a sprint and three weeks as a sprint or four weeks. Typically like they follow either two or three weeks because if you keep one week as a sprint, that's a very short. That means, that means like you end up with a lot of meetings. At the same time, if you keep like four weeks as a sprint, it's a very large duration, right? That means sometimes like you lose the focus, like what you're working in that particular sprint. So that way, to be optimistic, like it should be like either two or three weeks, just we're going to keep that as a, a sprint duration. So once this product backlog is ready, then the Scrum must, uh, the, the product owner is going to come up with a, a sprint backlog. That means he's going to create a sprint. Right? So just click on this create sprint, then it's going to start with what are the project sprint one. Then the product owner is going to prioritize what needs to be done because suppose like you take the sprint duration is say two weeks time. Right? Then he's going to plan accordingly what things that can be accomplished in the next two weeks. That becomes your sprint backlog. That means he's going to say, all right, let's, uh, let's the, let the team is going to work on the login user story or something like say, let me put some different use case, right? Say transfer money. Then he's going to prioritize what needs to be accomplished first. Accordingly, he's going to do drag and drop. Then this becomes your the sprint backlog. So everybody clear what's the difference between the product backlog and the sprint backlog? Then once you have this sprint backlog is ready, then the planning is going to happen. So what happens in this planning? And who are all going to attend this meeting, the planning meeting? So the entire team is going to attend 
the planning meeting. And this very important thing, right? What what can be done in this sprint planning meeting is the task allocation will be done. That means who is going to work on what user story, right? The task allocation to the team members. And also at the same time, the estimation will be done. This very important thing, right? How the estimation will be done when the scrums? Anyone? How are you going to come up with an estimation? What is the effort involved to finish that particular user story? How is the estimation will be done? Uh, based on the points. Based on the points. Okay. So how you get those points? Uh, we have to determine the complexity of the task and the time and the human effort it takes to okay. finish the task. Okay. Very good. So you're going to come up with how complex that particular story is and then come up with the story points. Okay. So how do you arrive with the complexity, Anisha? Um, by the human effort and the time it takes to finish the task. Okay, that's what my question is. Like how you get the complexity of your particular user story? How you know the complexity? Um, how you determine the complexity? Like is it simple? Can it be performed in like less time or will it take several steps? Does it depends on does it depend on prerequisite step and how long it will take? Okay. Okay. So I mean anyone like how you how you determine how complex that particular thing is? How is the complexity like you have if you compare, right? Then only you know like how, how complex this one is compared to the that one. So that, that is the reason like what you are going to do is, these are the numbers like we are going to follow to come up with an estimation, right? That means you are going to assign the points to the user story. It could be a, a one point or two points, three point, five points. These are the numbers we are going to follow to come up with an estimate. So how you come up with these numbers? That means first you are going to establish a benchmark by looking at a small user story in the project. For example, like we are talking here, these are the different user stories, right? Login and transfer menu. In typically, like if you look at any project, right, you will get the login, those kind of functionality is relatively simple compared to the other functionality, right? So compared to the transfer money, login is going to be the simple. First you are going to establish a benchmark. What it is going to take to finish the login story, to finish the login use case. You come up with an estimate, you, you assign the story points for that story. Like again, how this can be done? It's a teamwork. Like, like as I mentioned, in this sprint planning meeting, like the entire team is going to attend and it's a team effort, it's not the individual effort, right? Whenever the Scrum Master says, hey, tell us guys like what it's going to take for this login story to complete. Then say, for example, like you have five team members, then two people says like it's going to be at two points and the other three members says, no, it's going to be a five points. Then we go with the five points. Again, estimation is always an approximation, right? It's not exactly like what it is. You are coming up with an estimation just to match with the majority of the people. If out of five, like two says like two point story, whereas the other three says like five points, then we go with the majority of the people like what? how much you are going to assign. That way you are going to accomplish first like what is 
you establish the benchmark, the baseline, right? So if the login is going to take a two points, then compared to the login transfer many functionality, how complex it is, how big it is, then you're going to come up with, okay, if it is login itself is two, probably like the transfer money is going to be 13 or 8. That way you are going to relative, right, comparison with respect to the other story, how complex it is, how big it is, and then assign the story points to that particular use case. Then what's the logic behind assigning these points? Why it cannot be the number of hours? Why we come up with a points? That is basically to know the team velocity or the team capacity, like say, how many story points that can be burned. That's where like we have, maybe you might have had burn down chart in Azure, the Scrum, right? Burn down chart. That means how many story points that can be accomplished or how many use cases that has worth of this many points, right? How many use story points that can be burned in the next two weeks time. You know to know the team velocity, team capacity. Say for example, here like I assign the points like this, right? Say, okay, so I feel like the login is the two. So you come up with an estimate. So these are the two points, story. Okay, you see the login is two points assigned. And say transfer money is going to be say 13 compared to that, right? So how big is compared to the login transfer money, how big it is, how complex it is. So once you come up with these numbers and then it's going to accumulate here, right? You see, now it's total. What you're going to accomplish is the 15 points story. That means you planned, that is your estimation you are going to accomplish 15 points of user stories in the next two weeks time. Then obviously like you are going to start working on the project, right? Then what happens? So you planned, let's take this example. The story points are, now we come up with 15. But the, at the end, at the end of the two weeks, like you are done with the first sprint, two weeks, you accomplished say 10 points. That means there is something to be done on those user stories. You couldn't complete fully. Like say for example, for each story you are going to come up with different tasks, right? Say prepare, first understand the requirements, those are the different user story contains different tasks. We're going to talk about like how we're going to schedule the task and everything. Say, understand the requirements, prepare test cases, run test cases, and create the defects, deal the different tasks under each user story from the tester perspective. So you started working on the sprint, then you couldn't accomplish some of those tasks assigned to that particular story user story, right? That means you accomplished only 10 points. That means there are 5 points left. That means there's, there is something needs to be done on those two use cases. That means those things will carry forward to the next sprint, right? 5 points of use cases that, that has to be carried forward to the next sprint. Same thing like in the sprint 2 also like uh, again you estimated you are a little bit aggressive and then you came up with like, okay, we are going to accomplish 20 points in the next sprint two, in the next two weeks. But again, end of two weeks, right? What you accomplished? Just maybe roughly around 12 points. That means again, eight points will carry forward to the sprint three. So if you look at this way now, what you understand? What is your team capacity? What is your team velocity?
what it really indicates these numbers. So on an average, your team capacity is around 10 points of user stories, right? That's your team strength. That means at any point, your team can work 10 points of user stories. Not more than that, not less than that. So whereas, like see if every time like if you plan 20 points but you are accomplishing 12 points, that means you are doing more estimation. Right? The estimation is not correct. That's why like you, you, I know like in the initial sprints, in the sprint 1, sprint 2, is going to be a problem. Come up with, because you don't know like what your team strength is. But definitely in the third sprint, you know, right, what is your team strength is. That way you are going to plan accordingly in the sprint 3. No, I'm going to plan maybe 12 points only. Like why I have to do 20 points and then I couldn't accomplish. Because what happens is, if you do the estimation, the planning like this, it always going to impact because the management is always looking at what these numbers are. And then they are under impression the planning is not done properly. The estimation is not done properly. Does that make sense? Or any questions? Okay, so this is the main thing, like part of this um, planning, like what happens is the task allocation will be done. Who is going to work on which task? And the estimation will be done by sending the points in the GRAM. Like, so that's why like you're going to get what are the um, story points that you're going to accomplish in this sprint. Then once these things are done, usually like this sprint planning is going to happen um, just um, a couple of hours meeting, then after that everybody is going to, everybody get their work and then they're going to start working on the sprint. Then part of this while you're working on the sprint, so we do these scrum meetings, that means these are the status meetings, right? Every day we do this scrum meeting, just to get the status update from everybody. Right? You'll get a chance to speak a couple of minutes in that meeting, to speak about yourself. Like what kind of work you did yesterday, and what you're going to do today. Any, any impediments on your way, anything that's blocking. That way you speak, uh, maybe it's, going to, it's not going to be a lengthy meeting, most days going to be around 15 minutes meeting where all the team members will get a chance to speak a couple of minutes. And then, so you're going to work uh, for two weeks, what are the tasks that is assigned to you, and then at the end, at the end of the two weeks, right? So we're going to have these sprint reviews, sprint retrospectives, and sprint demos. So that's how, that's how like this, um, again, once uh, we are done with these two weeks, right, the next, again, the things gets repeated. Again, the product owner is going to come up with the next sprint to backlog. He's going to create sprint two, and then again, he's going to assign what needs to be accomplished in the sprint two. Okay, so we're going to talk about that uh, sprint retrospective, sprint reviews um, in our next session. Anyone having any questions so far? We are using Jira basically for our management. Yeah, exactly. Like we are using for project management, Jira, and also we are using for any kind of the defect management as well. So it's like important tool in DevOps. Yeah, this is also a DevOps tool. Uh, hi Sam, I have a question. And uh, this is basically a collaboration tool, open source tool between the developers and uh, the testers. We create different jobs. Again, the installation part is pretty simple. All you have to do is uh, just download 
um, a jar file and you're going to do you're going to run the jar file from the command prompt and then it will install Jenkins on your system and work with the Jenkins is also pretty easy along with other tools because a um, lot of plugins available with Jenkins so that um, it has a compatibility to work with um, the tools like the Selenium or the UFT or JMeter you can you can run all those tests from Jenkins using these plugins so what I'm going to do is like you go, go to and then there is a documentation part here just if you click on this documentation that clearly explains how you can install the Jenkins just four simple steps okay just follow these steps and then just make sure like you have this Jenkins installed if not uh, if you have some issues or if not if you have some difficulty to install this then I can look at in our processes okay but it's very simple I'm sure all right so that's all for today and we're going to see you on Thursday any questions And then what about the Selenium role in DevOps? So what we are going to do with Selenium, or we just need know how the Selenium because Selenium is basically function testing to what I know. You're talking about the Selenium. I didn't uh, quite get your question. I said uh, what we are going to do with Selenium in DevOps because uh, Selenium is basically, basically see, testing. DevOps is a, a, a concept. It's an agile push. These are the tools mm -hmm. that from the tester side we are going to use in the DevOps environment. So Selenium, UFT, these are all the DevOps testing tools. So you are going to develop some test scripts um, and we are going to run those Selenium tests from Jenkins, part of um, the continuous integration testing. So as a DevOps engineer, we should also know Selenium completely or just creating the script? See, in these sessions, like we are going to do the um, 